Hello, beautiful ladies, and welcome to today's video where we're going to be doing my lovely friend Amanda Nelson's wedding makeup. So Amanda is getting married this year. It's very exciting, and I am a bridesmaid. So can you tell us a little bit about what your vision is for your wedding? Oh gosh. <laughs> I know it's so hard to do it for yourself. Well, people ask me this all the time. What's the theme to your wedding? What are your colors? And I'm like, I don't really have one. <laughs> <laughs> well, what color are the bridesmaids wearing? So if you've followed her on Instagram, you will notice that my favorite color is burnt orange and mm -hmm. those rustic colors. So my bride bridesmaids are going to be wearing um, burnt orange. Yes. Shocker. Yes. <laughs> And um, so from what we've talked about, we've done kind of some trial runs for her makeup. We decided we're going to try and do a an exaggerated kind of burnt orange smoky eye. Yeah. Yeah. But with a bridal touch um, because there's going to be some very pretty shimmer. Yes. Mm -hmm. Super glowing. <laughs> and we're just going to chat and do her makeup and you guys can get to know Amanda a little bit. So let's... Mm. Let's hop in. Let's get started. <laughs> so we're gonna start off by using the Bosha Porefecting White Charcoal Mattifying Treatment Primer. Amanda likes a matte look, and I think that's a good call for your wedding day. <laughs> Trying to do something that's dewy for your wedding day can really, like it just is risky because it can come off a lot easier, whereas a matte look can usually stay all day. So that's a lot safer. So, um, and I really like this, this primer. <laughs> So, um, can you tell us a little bit about how you and Justin met? Oh gosh. So, my <laughs> fiance's name is Justin, and um, we are both opera singers by trade and profession. Mm -hmm. And so, it's kind of a funny story because we met doing a gig a couple years ago in Miami. We both <laughs> went into this contract with no intention of uh, meeting anyone or, or to be dating. We were just like, this is strictly professional and to, to build up network and, and resume and experience and take it seriously. We were very close as friends, like nothing quote unquote really happened and it really didn't kind of dawn on us um, that kind of feelings were there until we had that kind of epiphany that was like, oh my gosh, the show's almost over. Like, reality is going to come back in and, yeah. and, and we're going to have to separate. Right, and you're not going to be able to see each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, just really quickly going to hop in. I'm using a color corrector under the eyes. This is the Revlon Photo Ready Color Correcting Pen. I keep yeah. telling us. <laughs> um, so one of the funny things is um, about how we met is the fact that we both were raised in Tennessee, which is so crazy. <laughs> like, how did you never run into each I other? Don't no, <laughs> there were plenty of times that we totally could have crossed each other's paths. Mm -hmm. um, but instead, we we've ne we never met. We never had any crossing friendship circles or anything like that. But the most hilarious thing about it all is the fact that he knew who my dad was. <laughs> They knew each other before we even met. That's so funny. <laughs> How did they know each other? <laughs> Sorry, I'm acting like I've never heard this story before. I haven't heard parts of it. So the parts of it that I'm like acting like I don't know, it's because I don't know. Okay. <laughs> My dad plays in um, an orchestra and a community band and all that. So this one concert that they did, um, they brought in singers as soloists. And one of those singers was my now fiance. Oh my god, that's amazing. And I remember my dad, it was probably, see we met like two years ago. So prior to that, it was probably a, three years before that. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember him telling me about this and I was like, okay, cool, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> so when my parents came down for the performance, um, and Justin joined us for dinner one day, and like I just saw this moment that he had with my dad, like, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> and that's when I found out that he was actually from Tennessee, because prior to that, I actually didn't know. It's so funny. It was so bizarre. So how did you end up in opera? Because you know, the two of us, we are opera singers, which is a unique vocation. Most people don't do that, so. <laughs> It's always fun to hear people's stories and how they ended up there. And mine is so random because I feel like the majority of um, classical musicians in general 
um, especially as instrumentalists, because I actually started out as a classical violinist um, at a very young age. So kind of the name of the game is you, you get a very early start mm -hmm. and exposure to that. Mm -hmm. And um, that was not the case for me when it came to singing because um, I was really big with my violin stuff, like I said, and then um, with sports. I was in so many different sports. Yeah. And so I remember growing up and wanting to take vocal lessons. Hmm. And for whatever reason, um, I just never did. It wasn't even until I was actually in undergrad already um, that... I, I don't know, it was kind of random, like out of the blue, that I started thinking about um, trying to take vocal lessons, because I was like, well, I'm not really doing violin anymore, and, yeah. and uh, I'm not playing sports, I had injured my back, so that was pretty much out of the question for me. Right, <laughs> right. And so I happened to find a teacher, mm -hmm. um, you know, no connection to the school I was at or anything, but uh, went to, to have a lesson. And I really had zero idea what I was getting into. <laughs> um, but I remember not being interested in anything classical mm -hmm. at all. Like, mm -hmm. he asked me, you know, what was kind of my ambition, like what kind of style did I want to learn, and I was thinking more of like musical theater and jazz and kind of more the, the music of the masses. Right, exactly. Per, per se. <laughs> um, I don't even remember what I sang. But I remember that it was only like four bars, it's like four measures of something. Right. And he stopped me and he was like, I'm sorry, but you just have a very natural classical voice. Mm -hmm. And it kind of threw me for a loop because I wasn't expecting it. Right. You're like, what? <laughs> yeah. And um, it was one of those things where it was like just out of my depth enough that my bullheadedness didn't take control and be like, mm -hmm. well, I don't care. I want to do what I want. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't until I sang my first aria. And um, the difference between an aria and an art song is basically that an aria is a solo from an opera, whereas an art song is just a piece by itself. Mm -hmm. um, so when I sang my first aria, which was O Mio Babino Caro, mm. it was just like, it clicked. Yep. And then I became obsessed. And all that happened within about three months. <laughs> and um, I was about 21. So funny. So that's really old. <laughs> For getting, like, first exposed to this. Um, but I, I just became determined. Yeah. I mean, I guess I started late. A lot of people think that I would start young, depending on who you ask. But I started at 16. Um, and I had friends when I started college who had been singing since they were eight, so... Oh my gosh. I know. But to be fair, um, one interesting thing about singing is that starting too young may not always be the best thing. Mm -hmm. Because your voice isn't really mature yet, and yeah. so you're trying to teach an instrument that's not what it's going to end up being. Yep. And that can, be that can be really difficult to break those habits. And especially, damaging. Yes, depending on how you're taught. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's better to start when you're older. It really just depends on the person. Yeah. What is the, your favorite production Ooh. that you've ever participated in? Oh, man. Probably the favorite produ my favorite production that I've done was when we did Dizzy Gona Baron. Mm. Um, because it's a Strauss opera and I love Strauss. <laughs> um, but... There's a lot of gypsies in it, and so we had a lot of dancing. Even though I was just in the chorus, mm -hmm. um, my colleagues who were in the chorus with me were very big about um, characterization, even though we weren't in the quote-unquote spotlight. Also, Drew. Oh my gosh. That is so fun. He's a, Drew is our friend from Manhattan School of Music, and yes. he is a great guy. It was always spontaneous and um, in the moment, and I, I just love acting with him. Mm -hmm. You just recently did a concert with your fiance. Oh, uh, yeah, we did. So that was pretty cool. That was really cool. We, um... Because I'm definitely never going to do that with my husband. <laughs> he's you not a mine. <laughs> It was super fun. I'm a very big... I'm like Abby, and... I'm a big planner mm -hmm. and organizer and do everything in the perfect thing. So finding out um, the right music um, was super fun. 
for me and my fiance it was just like, <laughs> oh my gosh. Right, like, what do I do? This is just too much. <laughs> I'm a color tura. So, so color tura is like a voice type that moves super easily and does a lot of florid movement. Like, can you give an example? Oh my gosh. I mean, oh. yeah, that kind of thing. And high stuff. Stress. <laughs> um, whereas, you know, a, a lyric, for example, which is what I am, is much more about like elongated phrases. So what we haven't done yet, because I haven't done the rest of her foundation and her concealer, is the under eye, her eyebrows, or her inner corner highlight. Yeah. So right now we just have the lid done and we're gonna finish up the eyes when we're done with the rest of the face. You can get fallout when you're doing a heavy smoky eye mm -hmm. like this, um, if you're using blacks or even dark browns. And on your wedding day, you really don't wanna be trying to like fix mistakes after the fact. You'd rather not have any mistakes at all. So we wait and do her foundation afterwards so that if there was any fallout, which I'm actually gonna go and grab a makeup wipe and just clean up just in case. What was your favorite class at Manhattan School of Music? Oh, that's a tough one. Yeah, it's hard, right? I loved Bill, but a lot of people had a little bit of a hard time oh, really? with that class. Yeah. I thought he was a sweet guy. Oh, and of course, I think we're gonna agree on this one actually. Glenn. Ah! Uh, Glenn is amazing. Speaking of which, keep your head in that position. Okay. <laughs> he made me fall in love with diction. Yes, so Glenn was our Italian diction teacher, and he was so musical. And passionate. Yes. And he just loved, yeah. he loved the music, and so it made us love the music. Mm -hmm. I actually went to one of his programs. Right! In the summer in, right, right, right. in France. How was that? It was fun. It was really intimate, because we stayed in like the chateau in the south of France. <gasps> that sounds amazing. It was amazing. We just did music like all day, and, and ate French food, and we had a chef, a personal chef that came in and cooked for us. Oh my god. And, um, for lunch and dinner every day. There was always a rosé and a white wine and a <laughs> red wine. Um, I love that. Yeah, it was phenomenal. We just performed little concerts and scenes and duets and solos like all mm -hmm. around the, the community and we traveled a lot and yeah. Um, I got really close with Glenn yeah. during that time. He's just such a kind and warm-hearted like I don't think anybody could not like this, this man. man. I really liked the movement classes. Oh, that was fun. Um, we had dance classes. Yeah. Uh, well, we had to learn all the classical ballroom movements. dance styles of different ages, mm -hmm. from like the foxtrot, to the waltz, to the tango. Um, because especially in choruses, they use a lot of that in um, major productions. And so mm -hmm. it's always a plus to have knowledge of that for sure to have just like a physical movement class where you're not sitting in a practice room like what do what i do, do? <laughs> that's my favorite yeah exactly. yeah it's kind of like when you're in grade school all day and then you have that break for pe class. <laughs> yes it's totally like that it's totally like that but in a good way <laughs> so what is one of your dream roles Mm. There's a difference between like dream role because I love the opera and dream role because I love the role. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Dream role because I love the opera, and I know that a lot of opera singers are sick of this opera, but whatever. Um, it's Magic Flute. I love the music of Magic Flute so much. I do too. I, I love I, it. And I am not, and I'm probably gonna get flock for this, but <laughs> I'm not a Mozart person. You know, there are certain composers that just don't speak to certain people, and I don't. Like, I think yeah. that's fine. I mean, I think that, yeah, I think that Mozart is, he's really hard to sing. He is hard to sing. So there's like some people that, that are like, oh, I can do it, it's easy. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Who are you? Who are you? And that's how they make their their, their money. Mm -hmm. I'm very picky with my rep. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love either the stuff that I can't sing because I'm not a lyric, so like, one of my favorites is like La Boheme. Mm -hmm. and, oh yeah, that's a dream role. And I love Mimi, and I am no Mimi. <laughs> I'm not even a Musetta. <laughs> there is a production of Boheme that is really, really famous that they do at the Metropolitan Opera, and it's uh, Zeffirelli. Fred Zeffirelli. Ugh! I've, I've seen it three times. Because it's amazing. It's the best. Yes. And so they were talking about like stopping it. Absolutely not. And I was like, sir, sir, I need to speak to your manager. <laughs> so I'm actually learning parts of the role, at least, of Romeo and Juliet. And I love the music for Romeo yes. and Juliet. I 
am not a fan of Jiva Vivre. I am not either. I but like the poison yes, area. It is luscious. It is. It's really fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> that kind of stuff. One of my goals, I would love to perform every role that has a mad scene. Ooh. So the first mad scene I ever did was Ophelia. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not a huge fan of the opera. Um, yeah, which is from Hamlet. Yeah, which is, yeah, Hamlet. It's not performed very often because one, Ophelia is a very difficult role. Yeah, not many people can do it. Yeah. So now what we're going to do is I am going to actually do cream products on her foundation, then we'll powder her, and then we'll do powder products just to give her more longevity, just in case she gets sweaty or whatever it is because it's a long day. You want to always make sure that you're giving somebody the best opportunity and chance for it to last. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm really big about... Not talking with a brush in my mouth. Yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> how do you <laughs> feel about that? <laughs> it's very soft. <laughs> Positive image and speaking, you know, words of life about yourself. Because in in today's society, it's almost like looked down upon if you view yourself through a positive light. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I just wanted to ask, what if your the fav your favorite like part about your yourself like the your, way I look yeah your um, physique hmm that's a good question maybe my eyes I like the shape of my eyes mm. yeah and I I like that I have an angular face yeah um, which you and I were constantly confused for each other at Manhattan School of Music and I think for that reason we have. Pretty similar, like, angularity, and we both had pixie cuts at the yeah. time. Yeah, we had pixie cuts, we're similar height, um, mm -hmm. we were both goofy and talked in weird voices <laughs> a lot, um, and so a, a lot of people thought that I was Abby and that Abby was me. What are you most excited about for the wedding? Mm -hmm. I'm really curious to see how it all just comes together in general, because my mom is helping me a lot, and we're both pretty artsy-fartsy, crafty, interior designy mm -hmm. um and always have been and um but the difference is like she's very visual she like she has to like see it to be able to visualize it and right. i can kind of put it together in my head right 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 um and and be pretty certain that it's gonna work mm -hmm. um so i'm just i'm just really excited to see how it all comes together i'm excited too from everything you've told me and like how much thought you put into everything i think it's gonna be beautiful yeah I'm really curious to see um, Justin's reaction when he first sees me. Oh, that's gonna be fun. Because um, we and we've talked about this a lot. <laughs> like, do you think you're gonna cry? And I'm like, <laughs> um, I and both of us are kind of like, don't think he will cry. Like, I don't think Jacob get, didn't cry. Yeah, no, I don't cry. think he'll get emotional. Now, me, I'm gonna be an em emotional naughty mess. Yeah, I cried a lot. <laughs> it's gonna be bad. Another thing that I'm pretty excited about is uh, Justin wants us to sing, but not together, mm. because that would be too much like a performance. <laughs> so he wants to sing a song to me, Aww. and wants me to sing a song to him. Oh, that's gonna be so cute. <laughs> And like really emotional, I'm sure. I know it's a horrible idea. I know I was gonna say I would be like, look. <laughs> and I was like, I'm not gonna be able to like phone it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny because I didn't sing at my wedding because I had a cold. That's right. Yes, I was sick, but I did do a um, recital for my professional study certificate, and it was all about kind of like my journey as a woman. Yeah, so I did like four parts of my of my life and it was like my childhood and then like being a young woman and and then um, the last one was like being a bride. And so I sang it like a few songs to Jacob there oh! and it was uh, it, it was emotional and I had to like not compose, compose yourself. <laughs> I had to like not let myself, but yeah. it was it was really fun and, and cool. I did my own makeup for my wedding and I had to like run it five or six times. And now looking back at it, I'm like, oh, I wish I'd used different products or whatever. Yeah, it was. always. What should I could have? Yeah, always. And I was still using a foundation that, like, I didn't really, didn't really work for me, but I used it anyway. Yeah. And now I'm like, no, that was the wrong foundation. You have so many more that work for you. So, what was the favorite part about your wedding? <gasps> Ooh, that was a good question. Um, 
I, it, it all honestly we didn't have any like disappointments or big problems Ooh, so that's good. that that's was awesome. amazing that's always awesome. plus yeah that was like we were very very lucky the the band we had such a good band and our dancing was like the best thing ever can you look up for me and i am so happy that we we felt like we could dance all night because <laughs> uh, we also banned <laughs> we we were really picky and we banned anything that was written after 19 like 80 like we were like don't don't do it just don't uh, this is like one of the avenues in which i can't think about the music i like mm. um and i had to think more of what is what are our guests going to enjoy and mm -hmm. feel comfortable Here, look with the um because i'm super picky with music. I listen to a lot of different kinds of music, mm -hmm. but I'm I'm so particular. Yeah. Are you guys having a DJ or? Yeah. Um, I would love to have a band, but I I was in a lot of weddings this year. Mm -hmm. We had a couple that had um, a live band and they were they were great and they were great MCs. But there was like another wedding that I went to that had um, a live band and they were a great band, but the, the schedule was very unorganized. So, mm. so like there was no like an announcing of when, when toasts are happening right. Right? or when the cake was going to, it, it just kind of seemed like kind of disarrayed. Plus, um, with our budget, it's just, it's so expensive. It is. It definitely To is. have a live band. Um, so we're going to have you do your mascara and your lipstick. And then, do you want to put on falsies? Yes! Okay, let's do some falsies. I love this lipstick. Gabby showed it to me yesterday for the first time, and I'm not a lip person, because one, my upper lip is quite thin, um, and my lips just hate lip products. Yeah, I mean, they like, for anybody, if I, I am actually not a huge proponent of a long wear lipstick for wedding days, because most long wear lipsticks aren't actually going to last that long. Yeah. yeah. And it's easier to just reapply your lipstick and yeah, I not worry about it. I don't see the big deal about like why people put so much emphasis of how long this lipstick's gonna wear and right. um because it's like if it's just gonna like start looking bad anyway, like what's the point? Yeah, exactly. I totally agree. And it's so easy to just be like boop, boop, boop. Yep. Like what why and is it that wears so off more naturally too. Oh, so yes. that's also super nice. Um and especially like with the more glossy ones, it's more nourishing mm -hmm. and moisturizing for the skin. I always love the idea of like liquid lipsticks and stuff. Right. But I'm just like, mm -hmm. <laughs> This is the look. How do you feel? I feel like I'm bra. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Please subscribe to my channel and blog if you haven't already. Head over to my Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook and follow me there. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye! <laughs>